There's no denying that, from a technological standpoint, the ancient Egyptians were super ahead of their time. Just take a look at the pyramids. But that's the tip of the iceberg. Or, uh, sandberg? <laughs> uh, anyway, the Egyptians achieved and developed incredible things, and even the most well-researched scholar in Egyptology knows not but the tiniest percent of the truth. These are 20 ancient Egyptian inventions that will surprise you. Number 20. The Pyramids What ancient Egypt is probably most famous for is its incredible pyramids. The construction of these giant triangular towers served as tombs and symbolic monuments for the pharaohs. They are filled with carvings, drawings, and writings which are super precious in terms of history. Most of them were constructed during the Old Kingdom era, which goes back to 2700 BC. Others were built a thousand years earlier during the Middle Kingdom era in 1700 BC, which is still pretty far back in history. Pyramids are ones are still standing today and are basically giant historical witnesses. Some are nearly 4,000 years old. The most ancient pyramid is 4,690 years old. It was built in 2667 BC in Saqqara, which is south of Cairo. Pyramids are, for the most part, constituted of bricks, earth, and sand. Historians suggest that approximately 100,000 workers resided on site during their construction. That's a lot, but it's not surprising given the fact that building a single pyramid required at least 20 years of labor. Small towns were surrounding the construction zones and were mainly occupied by these workers. Archaeological findings at pyramid sites have revealed artifacts associated with various roles, like bakers and doctors. So it's even possible that some of these workers traveled with their staff and family, or that some of them had different functions at the same time. Maybe they were priests, physicians, and even bakers. Who knows? There's still a great amount of mystery surrounding the Egyptian pyramids. What we do know is that the construction of those massive monuments came with a significant cost. And this is precisely why pyramids stopped being built. They were just too expensive. And it's time for the strange topic. Ancient Egypt made planes way earlier than we thought. They didn't exactly work though. <laughs> At least that's what some expert Egyptologists are claiming. Why? Expeditions and digs in the sands of Egypt are pretty common. It's one of the major ways, if not the major way, we unravel the many secrets that once great ancient civilization held. And during the relatively recent dig, this odd structure was found. Certainly to our eyes, this looks like it could be the remains of an attempt to build a plane. This isn't as bonkers as you might think. Leonardo da Vinci designed flying devices way back in the 1480s that experts now think would have worked if they'd been made. So it makes sense people were aiming for flight further back than we realize. We have to assume this plane sadly did not work, hence why it was dumped in the desert. But the fact that they tried and even got so far as to build the skeleton of the plane is infinitely fascinating. There's always a chance that this is something else, some kind of ceremonial statue, for example, or just art. We'll never know the truth, but we feel confident this was an early human attempt at flight. Do you agree? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag strange topic. Number 19, mummification. Did you know that the Egyptians preserved bodies almost perfectly? Quite creepy. In ancient Egypt, people used to mummify their dead. Mummies are real and are basically canned human corpses. No wonder why they fascinated and terrified contemporary culture through stories and movies like The Mummy. <laughs> but mummies are super interesting and they do tell a lot about ancient Egyptians' lifestyle. In ancient Egypt, it was believed that mummification allowed the spirit of the deceased to recognize its physical appearance and regain it in the afterlife. During the Old Kingdom, only a few royal embalmers were allowed to perform mummification on members of the pharaoh's family. A thousand years later, the ritual was open to people that could afford it. Mummification is actually super interesting and tells a lot about society back then. Practically speaking, the mummification process consisted of preserving a whole body. It involved extracting all moisture from the body to ensure long-term conservation. Organs were also removed and placed in special jars. This procedure was carried out by special priests known as embalmers. They were the ones capable of combining religious beliefs and science. Number 18. Ancient Egyptians used water clocks to measure time at night. Can you wrap your head around the fact that the notion of time historically appeared at a certain time, and that was 3,000 years ago. Egyptians had the notion of life passing and time. 
they created clocks, and more specifically water clocks, to manage their day and organize the rhythm of their lives. Water clocks are also known as clepsydras. These water clocks were precious items reserved for high dignitaries and the aristocracy. The technical principle is, at first sight, quite simple. Two basins are necessary. One of them is filled with water and then drilled to allow its evacuation into the second basin. It then gets trickier. Measuring spaces were engraved on the inner wall of the vase receiving the water and they and to be properly read and calculated. This enabled Egyptians to know the duration of a day and a night and even a season. There was systematically some water left at the bottom of the second basin. And guess what? This was usually where two mysterious hieroglyphs were inscribed, the ones of life and stability. This is proof that the Egyptians did take the notion of time super seriously. They linked time to life itself. The oldest clepsydra ever found came from the ruins of the Karnak temple and was created around 1403 BC. However, a text explaining the mechanisms of water clocks was found within the pyramid of Amenmet, which was built around 1500 BC. This means that clocks were already a thing for a long time. Number 17, comb. Did you know that hair combs are one of the most ancient tools in the world? They were invented thousands of years ago, and the Egyptians are believed to be one of the earliest civilizations to use them. Hairstyles were definitely a thing in ancient Egyptian culture. The children had their heads shaved with a side braid. This hairstyle paid homage to Horus, the god of the sun, who wore the same braid during his childhood. Depending on the social rank of the child, the braid was decorated in different ways, with simple flowers and even, in some cases, with gold clasp. During puberty, future men shaved their heads and future women let their hair grow. Once Egyptians reached adulthood, men would grow their hair and make sure to show their ears, while women's hairstyles were much more varied and complicated. Some things never change. Women's hair could be straight, wavy, curly, tied in a ponytail, or even with pigtails. Even back then, hair trends were a thing. During the Old Kingdom era, women preferred to have short or mid-length hair, while under the New Kingdom era, long hair was more fashionable. It was usually decorated with different ornaments, like diadem, pearls, precious stones, pins, or flowers. In either case, ancient Egyptians definitely needed something to untangle their hair, and that's probably why they decided to use combs. When women combed their hair in public, it could also mean something else. That's right, it used to signify that they were willing to please a man. Number 16, Ancient Egyptian Calendar. We all use a calendar, be it for work, appointments, or meetings. Society would be lost without it. How would we start working or go to school? How would we function without understanding the seasonal changes all over the world? Well, thanks to the Egyptians, we have one. In fact, the Egyptians invented one of the first calendars in the world. The calendar that we now use is quite similar to the ancient Egyptian version. More than 10,000 years ago, Egyptians lived next to the Nile River and were following its annual flood to live and fertilize the land. The rhythm of the Nile was super important to them. It was punctuating their days and work on the fields. Niles' floods were even more important than the moon phases. To create their calendar, the Egyptians decided to base themselves on the arrival of a Sirius, also known as the Dog Star, which was following the Nile's floods. From Sirius's arrival into the eastern sky, they formed a year-long calendar that had 360 days and counted 30 days per month. It is similar to ours, except that they forgot about leap year, meaning that it became inaccurate over time. In any case, using a calendar enabled Egyptians to keep an eye on the seasons and maximize the cultivation of their land. Egyptians still managed to create the first solar calendar in the world. It is famously represented on the walls of the Kom Ombo Temple, located in Aswan, Upper Egypt. Number 15, surgical devices. In ancient Egypt, surgery was a serious thing. Can you believe that Egyptians used and invented a variety of surgical tools that are quite similar to those of today? Egyptian surgeons were able to make stitches with needles and remove objects with scalpels or forceps. They would even apply ointments to certain wounds. Egyptians were super advanced in the medical field. Yes, they did also use spoons, forks, and knives, but it's still quite impressive to think that lives could be saved 3,000 years ago. It's also surprising to think that it happened with some of our modern tools. Medical knowledge of ancient Egypt is precisely described in a variety of texts written on papyrus. They were all written during the Middle and Old Kingdom eras, meaning that medicine is a super old science. Some of the main texts that were discovered are the Edwin Smith Papyrus and the London Medical Papyrus. They describe certain surgical procedures like amputations. They explain certain plant-based preparations used for medicine or as ointments. 
Some illnesses are also transcribed like oral infections or ulcers. Another famous text is the Ebers Papyrus, and this one depicts how to use all the medical tools from ancient Egypt. These tools were quite advanced and some of them, like scalpels, are systematically used by surgeons today. Number 14, prosthetic toe. 3,000 years ago, Egyptians were already creating prostheses. It all started in 1871 when two Egyptian brothers went to look for their lost goat. That's right, they had no idea what discovery they were about to make looking for their goat. According to the story, they slipped through an opening between rocks and discovered a 3,000-year-old necropolis, which served as a cemetery in ancient Egypt. It's called the Necropolis of Sheikh Abd al Gorna and is home to different tombs. Amongst them, researchers found a mummified woman wearing a wooden toe prosthesis. She had her right toe amputated and managed to find a solution back then to be able to walk properly again. According to scientists, this is one of the oldest prostheses ever discovered. It is about 3,000 years old and is made of wood and leather parts. The prosthesis is very detailed and resembles a toe, but was not only decorative, but served its user. Number 13, codified writing. Ancient Egyptians established the first ever written alphabet. That's right, Egyptians created hieroglyphs, which consisted of signs and characters. The oldest hieroglyphic inscription was found in a tomb dating back to 4000 BC. Other pieces of hieroglyphic writings were identified in a temple and date from the 4th century. This is proof that hieroglyphs have been used for more than 3,000 years, making it one of the longest used forms of writing. Be they on walls, papyrus, or monuments like pyramids, thousands of hieroglyphs have managed to make it to this day without a scratch. The engraved characters aren't letters in the usual sense. They represent sounds or actions. As they were codified, they took on different meanings depending on the sign they were written next to. Thanks to an incredible French guy named Jean-Francois Champollion, also known as the father of Egyptology, Hieroglyph's code was finally cracked in 1822. These signs had multiple functions. They corresponded to a phonetic sound, a meaning, and had an ideological value. As the vowels are not written, we're not very sure of their pronunciation, but we do get an idea. The characters, however, were not used by just anyone and for anything. They consisted of symbolic signs that were considered sacred. Each of them was associated with Egyptian gods. They were also super complex and took a long time to draw and engrave. That's also why some hieroglyphs were changed to simpler versions of themselves. Far from being a simple mode of linguistic communication, hieroglyphs were used to transcribe important pieces of information that needed to be remembered. This is why they are mainly printed or engraved on special monuments. Later on in history, the scribes, the ones who knew how to read and write during those times, also used hieroglyphs for important administrative, medical, or political texts. Number 12, ancient Egyptian black and red ink. How would we write without ink? Thanks to the Egyptians again, they invented it 5,000 years ago. The ink they used was either red or black. Black ink was more commonly used than the red one. Who would have guessed? That's right. Red ink was strictly employed for specific pieces of information, such as titles, important instructions, or names, or crossing out all the wrong answers on Egyptian students' homework. Just kidding. Over the past decade, Many studies have been conducted to understand how the Egyptians managed to create their ink. It's a whole mystery. Researchers have discovered that the composition of their ink was actually far more complex than expected. They found traces of chemicals and a bunch of complex mixtures involving heavy metals for pigment purposes, but also as a sicative. In other words, as a component to accelerate the drying of the ink. This is super smart, but also super modern for their time. This form of composition was used again centuries after by Renaissance painters. Did they time travel? Number 11, papyrus. It's almost impossible to separate papyrus from Egyptian history. I mean, come on. Papyrus is a unique plant. It had many functions, but was mostly used as a medium for writing. Papyrus began to be used for writing around 2000 BC, but what is it exactly? Papyrus is basically a semi-aquatic plant. Only grows in the wetlands. It can reach up to five meters in height. They're fantastic refuges for wildlife and can serve as a home for birds, hippos, and even hide crocodiles. No wonder they wanted to chop it all down. Originally from tropical Africa, papyrus disappeared from Egyptian shores around the 18th century, the same time that Napoleon visited the country. Guess the plant didn't particularly like the French emperor. A papyrus sheet was obtained by assembling thin strip cut from the stems of a plant. These strips were then arranged perpendicularly. They were then beaten against each other with a hammer. Finally, the strips adhere to each other after being immersed in the water of the Nile. The sheets were glued together with a dough made from flour and formed rolls of paper. 
These were white in color, thanks to the bleaching action of the sun, and darkened over time to take on a yellow-brown color. In general, only one side was used to write, the one where the fibers are horizontal. It's a super precise process. The longest papyrus ever discovered is the Harris Papyrus, which is 41 meters long once unrolled. Can you believe it? It's almost the size of an entire building in length. All of it recounts the reign of Pharaoh Ramses III and lists the different donations made to the temple. Scribes used to write hieroglyphs on papyrus, using their ink and a sort of pen. Papyrus was such a success that even the Greeks and the Latins started importing it from Egypt. But papyrus was also used for different purposes. Once bound together, bundles of papyrus were used to build boats. The stem also gave a raw material for basketry and weaving. Papyrus was then used to produce all types of things like baskets, clothes, sandals, ropes, and sailboats. Even the root and the pith of the plant were used to wick torches. Papyrus was also food. The fruits and the tender part of the stem were eaten, while the rhizome, rich in starch, was roasted before being eaten. Truly a magical plant. Number 10. Irrigation System by Digging Canals from Nile River Egyptians invented many things and were brilliant visionaries. Their knowledge also extended to agriculture. As we know, the inundations of the Nile were super important to cultivate their land. They used the annual floods to irrigate their fields and to make sure to keep their soil healthy and fertile. The floods of the Nile were cyclical, meaning that the Egyptians were well prepared. A chain of basins was developed around the Nile Valley to receive water from the floods. These basins were bordered by earth dikes and formed a pool that was connected to different canals. While some were feeding the basin with more flood water from the Nile, the other canals were redirecting it to certain fields. This enabled them to keep lands irrigated all over Egypt. Isn't that super genius? The Egyptians also invented a more efficient water lifting device. At first, water was lifted using seesaw wells with a counterweight. Then they used a wooden wheel with jugs inside. Finally, this system evolved into a two-wheel machine where a blindfolded animal would be in the first wheel that would then turn the second one in motion. These ancient mechanisms are still visible in Egypt today. Number nine, the ox-drawn plow. Irrigation was not the only necessary thing to cultivate an entire land. Floods were the most important aspect of Egyptian agriculture, but people obviously needed to work the land as well. Fields had to be plowed, grain had to be sown, and water had to be moved to different areas. That's a lot of physical work. But again, the Egyptians found a way to make it easier with irrigation, but also with the invention of the ox-drawn plows. The ox-drawn plow was designed by Egyptians and there was not one, but two gauges, the heavy plow and the light one. The heavy plow went first and dug the furrows, while the light plow followed and turned the soil. Once the field was plowed, the workers, equipped with hoes, broke up the clods of earth and sowed the rows. They still had to work manually, but the ox plow definitely helped. Number eight, toothpaste. Today, brushing your teeth is a mechanical gesture. It's completely part of your daily routine. But did you know that it was also a thing in ancient Egypt? That's right. Egyptians cared very much for their hygiene, and that included their teeth. They invented toothpaste. It consisted of a mixture of salt, mint, pepper, and crushed dried flowers. This was all mixed into a powder, which would then be soaked in water and transformed into a paste. Egyptians rubbed their teeth with a reed and that exact paste. They also added tree bark to try and hide the bad taste of their preparations. <laughs> At the same time, teeth cleaning was also very popular in India and China, where dried herbal powders were flavored with ginseng and other medicinal plants. Number seven, eye makeup. Did you know that makeup was already super popular 7,000 years ago? For centuries, the world of cosmetics has experienced many trends. In ancient Egypt, people even had a spiritual, protective, and aesthetic view of beauty products. They knew how to combine the elements of nature to create a whole variety of natural pigments. The origins of makeup date back more than 4,000 years BC. It was first used for religious purposes. It was then applied to the faces of deceased people during funeral rites to give them a clean and youthful aspect. <laughs> sure, we swear you're not dead looking. A bunch of cosmetic products for hair and makeup were often found in tombs. The Egyptian civilization was the first in history to use makeup as a beauty enhancer. They definitely cared about their physical appearances. They used a variety of pigments for their faces and especially their eyes. Egyptians considered makeup around the eyes to be an amulet for protection against the evil eye, of course. They had a great knowledge of cosmetic chemistry and made their own products. To preserve their beauty products, they added resins with antioxidant properties. 
They also invented blush and eyeshadow that they obtained from a mixture of plants, oils, and minerals. One of the most famous looks from then is Cleopatra's eye makeup, consisting of dark blue eyeshadow on her upper eyelids, light green on her lower lids, and finally her famous liner of coal. Let's not forget that Egypt was as hot and humid as it is today, a super hot country, and was still dry and sandy back then. Makeup around the eyes, and especially coal, was filled with antibacterial qualities to fight against eye diseases. It also played a defensive role to avoid the extreme sun on the eye retina. Number six, wigs. Egyptian sculptures and paintings are all filled with human or divine characters wearing wigs. And that's because people used to wear wigs quite often in ancient Egypt. Hairstyle was a serious thing and wigs were worn by Egyptians, including men, women, and children. The most precious ones were composed of real hair. Some others were made of wool, horse hair, or vegetable fibers. Egyptians took special care of their wigs. They were combed and covered with beeswax and resin to hold the hairstyle in place. Wigs were meticulously made by hand. A wig maker would first collect enough material to make a wig and would then begin knotting the base layer with the help of a wooden wig stand. It would take up to 200 hours or even more to compose. Number five, breath mints. Egyptians did brush their teeth, but teeth decay and oral abscesses were quite common back in the day. While studying mummies, scientists found many tooth and gum diseases. They apparently had chronic bad breath. Can you imagine? But Egyptians found a solution, breath mints. That's right, they invented breath mints 5,000 years ago. To make them, they combined and boiled a bunch of ingredients like myrrh, cinnamon, frankincense, and honey that they then shaped into pellets. Number four, corbelled arches and stone carving. Egyptians could really create magical things using simple stones. They did build incredible monuments like pyramids, but they didn't stop just there. Egyptians used the architectural method of corbeling, which basically consists of filling spaces within a structure in the form of an entranceway or bridge. Egyptians used corbelled arches within the chambers of certain pyramids and some of them are 3,400 years old. Stones were also engraved by Egyptians. From regular bricks to gemstones, Egyptians would carve symbols that would express their beliefs. They often consisted of gods or animal heads like lions, cats, and eagles. All these symbols were meticulously engraved on monuments and fine stones, like carnelian, amethyst, emerald, hematite, turquoise, and even lapis lazuli. When the engravers coated the stones with divine images, or even with inscriptions that were prayers, they became talismans that would be used as protection. It would protect and defend the person wearing it and was identified with his personality. Quite magical. Number three, Shadouf. Egyptians didn't just stop at the canals to irrigate their lands. They also invented a super cool water pump called Shadouf. This tilting device is used to draw water from a well, a water point, or a stream. It consists of a wooden beam fixed on a vertical axis, one end of which is equipped with a rope and container. The other end has a stone used as a counterweight. During excavations in Egypt, archaeologists found segments of copper pipes that were probably used to carry drinkable water. So not only did Egyptians pump their water, but also did they dig pipes and ensure a good distribution of water. Number two, granite cutting technology. Egyptians liked to use a variety of materials to build their monuments. They mainly used limestone, but usually favored black, gray, and red granite. This type of stone was mostly located around the city of Aswan, situated on the right side of the Nile, where granite mines cover an area of 20 square kilometers. That's the size of a town. These mines are still used to this day. They are rich in history and reveal the techniques used by ancient Egyptians to extract and cut the stones they needed for their pyramids and temples. Cutting a piece of granite is not a piece of cake. To properly do so, Egyptians had to cut a series of holes in the granite using a hammer. They would then insert pieces of wood in those holes. After doing this, Egyptian workers would soak the chunks of granite in water so that it would cause the wood to expand and the rock to split. How smart is this? The final touches were done using a chisel to break the pieces properly. The chisel was usually made of iron. Number one, police. Can you believe? that police forces emerged 5,000 years ago. Just like today, they maintained order in the cities. Police had different roles in ancient Egypt from checking taxes to ensuring security on the roads. Egyptian policemen were super organized. One of their main tasks was to guard the Pharaoh, his palace, and the royal family. They were dispatched all over the country and especially around the river, the temples, and of course, the royal family. There were two distinct categories of policemen in Egypt, 
They had the Metropolitan Police, which maintained order and security in big cities like Memphis, and the Eastern and Arabian Desert Police. Back then, the police even used trained dogs and had weapons just like today, except theirs were mostly arrows, bows, and shields. A minister oversaw the entire police department. His main role was to provide global security reports and keep track of the people entering and leaving the country, just like customs today. What else could the Egyptians have invented? Did we discover everything ancient Egypt had to offer? What if society then was way smarter than society now? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.